This is a quick little tutorial on um, read.activelylearn.com um, that we uh, we went through this morning. One thing that you're going to want to do, um, I had you sign up this morning as a as a student. You're going to want to delete that account, and then you want to go back and um, you want to create a new account right here. And when you create a new account, you want to sign in as a teacher so that you can um, use this. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and sign into my account. And this is what my dashboard looks like once I get into this. Um, and these are all um, just um, different articles that have been provided by uh, read.activelylearn.com. Um, these aren't articles that I uploaded, so you're free to use these articles. You have up here, you have um, different grades. You've got your categories, current events through math. Um, we also have free versus pre-created assignments, and then there's some paid assignments. Now, I don't use paid assignments. I just pre do everything free. Um, you can pay if you want to. Um, also, over here on my sidebar, I can create assignments or view my classes. So I'm going to go ahead and create an assignment right now and show you how to do that. So I click on the Create Assignments tab, and this is my dashboard. This is my workspace. This is the, these are the um, articles I've either uploaded myself or these are the articles that I've borrowed from somebody else um, on this website and um, I can add content a couple different ways. I click up here to add content if I want to put a new article on here and I can select from a catalog, use an article for an internet which is I use do often. I can use Google Docs um, which is a good way to do it as well. I don't recommend uploading a PDF because it limits how you can embed questions into, um, into the article. So I'm going to use an article from the internet right now so it's going to give me a place to copy and paste the URL right now. So what I'm going to do is I already have an article that was just posted today on um, the New York Times um, website. And so it's all about Marie Curry and, um, and one of her lab assistants. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy up here at the top. I'm going to copy this, um, this web address. I'm going to go back over here to read. And I'm going to paste it in. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this text here. Um, I can select. I'm going to select a grade level. I'm just going to put 10 to 12, and this is going to be science. And then I'm going to hit done. Okay, so it just popped up right there. And so there's my article that I'm going to assign to my kids. But I'm going to add some questions first. So let me go ahead and click on this. And there's the article. And what I want to do is, as I read through and want to put a question for the students, it's really easy to do. So let's say I get down here and it mentions barium. We want to make sure questions always are after the, the passage that we read because we can set this so that kids have to answer a question to continue reading. So um, I've mistakenly put a question before something that they were reading about and the students couldn't find the answer. So I'll highlight this and it pops up. I can insert a question and I can insert a note. I can insert a link or I could have the kids define this word. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a question. I'm going to pick a standard there's different standards that are common core standards. Um, I'm just going to put an open response for now to make it easy and type a little quick. I can do a multiple choice or a quick um, short answer. And I'm going to do a short answer. And um, I could add media here if I want to, a video or something like that. Um, I'm just going to give them a real easy entry in question to get it, get them going on it. Hit done. And there's my question that pops up right there. So as the kids are going to read this, just like we did this morning, um, they are going to um, they're going to they're going to have to answer that question to continue reading. Um, I might come down here and here's uh, Marie Curie, a famous scientist. Um, I might want to insert a link here to her. And so I opened up a tab up here at the top. This is another tab, Nobel Prize. I'm going to copy this tab and maybe insert a link here for kids to go. Um, that now they can click on that and it, maybe I can have them answer a question about her. Why is she so important? Why is she being mentioned in this article? Um, okay. Now, so I can keep, do, keep going all the way through, add as many questions as I want, whatever I feel like. Um, now, let's go back and look at what it looks like from the teacher's point of view um, when you view a class. So I'm going to click down here on viewing classes and up here I have change class, so I have all my um, my five classes that I teach, and I also have the teachers class that I just created this morning for the the training that we that we did. Um, and so 
let's go ahead and put it on that one. And here is the article that we read this morning, and I've got 177 ungraded responses. Of course, I'm not going to grade all those responses, but it can give me an idea of, of what I can do. Um, I've got the roster of everybody here who, who um, read the article and did any responses. Um, and I've created a grade book here that I can punch in grades um, as we go along. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's, uh, let's look at our assignment, though. Um, so I can click on it here. And one of the things it does is, is over here, it allows me the performance data. If I click on this performance data, it shows me as we're reading through how far people have gotten. You know, So um, up here, um, Ms. Schroeder didn't do any of the questions. So maybe if she was in my class, I could get on her and tell her, you know, you need to get to work. Um, whereas down here, most of these people answered all of the questions. So it just kind of gives me an idea how fast or slow kids are going on questions. Um, one of the things that I can also do is I can also click on this ungraded response, and I can start seeing responses um, from people. So if I click down here, I've got all my students, and I can go through and I can pick somebody out. Now here's, we'll use John Doe because somebody wanted to remain anonymous apparently. Um, we'll go ahead and use theirs. And so right here, they answered 83% of the, the questions. So I might just make it real easy on myself, <clears throat> excuse me, and I might just um, give a student credit for answering all the questions and then maybe read one and give them a, a response on just one. Um, so that would be easy. And if I did that, then I could just open up another tab um, and maybe have my areas open and just enter it one at a time, or maybe I could just log it somehow. We'll make it make it really efficient. And I can also read um, the students' questions or the responses as well. Go ahead and refresh this real quick here. Down here we have um, responses, and so these are all the responses for each one of these ones. So if I wanted to go through and and look at these responses, I could um, again. I, I tend to um, go down here to the end where they'd have them uh, agree or disagree here, and I think that's that's a really good way to go about doing things. Okay, so that's that's an overview, a basic overview of how to use this uh, website. Um, again, you can browse catalogs. There's a lot of other things. There's also a help center if you need to get to help, or you can come into B12 um, anytime and ask me questions about this or watch this in action if you like. Um, feel free to email me or stop by if you have questions on how to use this or um, talk to Julie. She's great in the library. Thanks.